that little party I went to? Diddy party? We went to the uh, little private area. Behind the, uh, cause he had a house behind his house. Like he had a house, a backyard with a, his backyard with a fat bed. And then it had like a miniature little whatever. And then. Hold up, did young Miami really recruit Crone to be one of Diddy's side pieces at his freak off sessions? Just when we thought this whole mess with Diddy couldn't get no messy Alice, it just sent the internet into a frenzy after she spilled the tea about how young Miami recruited Crone to be Diddy's freak off girl. What's even crazier is that this whole recruiting ring actually goes much deeper than just young Miami. Apparently, Diddy was also in cahoots with the producer of Baddie's Lamel Plumber to service him, some of the girls from the show, and in was one of the people that did he had his eyes set on. Not only did Carissa reveal this shocking information, but, but people also did some digging and pulled up some incriminating evidence. There's even a video of Cran sounding super traumatized while narrating the whole thing. But people didn't take her seriously at the time because they thought she was just clout chasing. But with everything we know about Diddy now, it looks like he's caused some serious damage to Cran as well now. In case most of y'all don't know right now, Diddy is in some very hot water. He's facing the possibility of going to jail after his house was raided by the Fed FS. The feds revealed that the reason why they decided to raid his house was because of all of the trafficking allegations and countless lawsuits that have been filed against him by his alleged victims, with the latest lawsuit being filed by producer Elrod. This raid immediately brought more attention to Lil Rod's lawsuit, so people went back to read the transcripts, and that's when they found out just how involved young Miami was in Diddy's shady business. I mean we already knew how she helped Diddy Rod. But an extended transcript of the lawsuit was recently made public, and she was exposed for also helping him transport substances. Now if y'all remember Lil Rod accused Miami of ordering one of her cousins to essay him while he was flat out drunk and hardly able to defend himself. According to court documents Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom while he was inside, at which point she allegedly started groping him and performing oral acts without his consent. Jones said that he tried to push her away and left the restroom, only to be followed by Miami's cousin, who then allegedly undressed and attempted to straddle him and have intercourse with him in front of Diddy and others. He also exposed Miami for receiving monthly payments from Diddy as a reward for servicing him girls for his parties. He said young Miami was among those who were paid a monthly fee by Diddy to work as his exu workers. He went on to attach a few images from that night, and as y'all can see Miami and her cousin as well as Diddy were having a wild time, as if the allegations couldn't get any worse. Miami is now also being accused of transporting pink coke for Diddy, which she would usually bring to him on her private jet. This was revealed in that extended version of Lil Rod's lawsuit. Robin Greenhill, the accountant, would ensure the wiring funds transfer or cash payments to ex-workers Frankie Santella, My Bond, Brendan Paul, and NKK would also be responsible for yearing payment to ex-workers in cash. Young Miami Jade and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Call's ex-workers and received a payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendants' ongoing criminal operation. Once all this information started rolling in, Carissa decided to insert herself into it when she revealed on IG Live that young Miami actually tried to recruit Cran to be in Eddie's freak-offs. She said there was once a time when Miami started to get real close with Crone and started taking her out all the time but never really knew why. However, with everything that's come out about Diddy, she's now putting two and two together. And she believes that Miami was working on Diddy's orders to recruit Crow. They was trying to recruit um, Krishan. That, that's, what, that's what Diddy and, uh, what's, what's the girl, Krish, Krish, Karisha was trying to recruit Rock. Remember that when they was heavily trying to get Rock to hang out with them? I think they was trying to recruit her. She got a lot going on we're gonna talk about it on this podcast and we're gonna get to the nitty gritty of all the gritty of the nitty because this it, it's necessary i think them mother was trying to recruit her because hey remember they just had her pulling up everything she she, about do you love her mm -hmm. yeah about? remember see what i'm saying yeah. um, we gonna, we gonna, this podcast gonna be because y'all know the mama know everything everybody business so we gonna find out on this podcast we ain't gonna talk no about nobody we ain't gonna mock nobody but we definitely gonna explore the possibilities that was going on because they kept calling her remember pull up to the birthday party come over here and dance on carisha remember that i yeah. feel like they was trying to recruit that baby yeah. to be being on this that sense. makes see what i'm saying that's why i gotta have a podcast because i gotta get on the table mm -hmm. can't nobody get it on the table but my nosy okay tasha k ain't she she over there making up I know we're going to get to the bottom of on this podcast. Tell me if I'm lying. Go on over there and tell me if I'm lying. I'm telling you.
thing. They was trying to recruit that baby. He said, let's get her away from him. Mm -hmm. That's what they was doing. We're going to put a couple pounds of that on her and have her fly. They ain't going to never suspect her. Damn, that would make so much sense. Mm -hmm. That's why he grabbed him and he said, what did he say? He said, do you love her or do you, she needs love. All she needs is love. All oh, she like needs is love. Mm. Now, how about that? We're going to explore. Initially, people thought Carissa was just trying to clout chase and get some attention from this whole mess, and she said she was going to be getting into it on her podcast, but it didn't take long for people to dig out the receipts that proved that Miami was on the hunt for Cran. People found a video of Cran at one of Diddy's parties, where he kept leaning over and kiss her face. Cran looked very visibly uncomfortable and confused, so she tried to smoothly move back, but he was holding her very strong in the same video, you can see her throwing it back, at Kisha, and they both seductively danced together, as if this wasn't weird enough. There's also this video from January, where Cran was narrating the time that Diddy jacked up, the producer of Beatty's Lamel Plumber. She said Diddy invited her and Lamel to his private room, which was behind his actual house. This is the place where a lot of the secret things happened, so no phone was allowed in, and Lamel wasn't allowed to bring security. Gan said that as soon as she and Lamel got inside, Diddy was immediately aggressive off RIP and grabbed Lamel by his collar. Apparently, Diddy was upset at Lamel because he was underpaying Croon for being on baddies. Now I was at first confused as hell when I heard this because what does her being underpaid by Lamel have to do with Diddy? However, considering the fact that Diddy was just trying to get Cran to become one of his little people, think this was just a stunt by Diddy to make Cran feel like she was safe in his hands. But Cran also said after that day, she and Lamel started having problems, but he did start to pay her better. So I set a price. I said 200,000. You said 100. I said 150. I'm not going underneath that. Cause what? I'm about to bring a lot to the table. That little party I went to, Diddy that? party. Trust we went to the uh, little private area. I got it, got it. Behind the, uh, cause he had a house behind his house. Like he had a house, a backyard with a, his backyard with a fat bed. And then it had like a miniature little whatever. And then we, me and Lemmy go upstairs. They tell him that he can't bring his security. He went in like a little, no security. So it's just me and Lemmy. We go up in there. Hold on. We go up in there. <laughs> we go upstairs. He like, what's up, Diddy? Um, you know, you, you met Krishan. Uh, you uh gave her kisses on the cheek. Uh, early early on in the party or whatever. Uh, we just wanted to follow up. Uh, I'm glad that you, you Krishan. And then he grabbed Lemmy by his neck. It was like, but do you <laughs> with her? Like, don't play with her. All she need is love. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. 